The northern and southern lights, known scientifically as the Aurora Borealis and Aurora Australis, are among the most breathtaking natural wonders on Earth. They are a dazzling display of lights that dance across the sky, creating swirls of color that can range from vibrant greens to purples, reds, and even blues. These lights have captivated humanity for millennia, inspiring myths, legends, and awe across various cultures. But while their beauty is undeniable, the science behind these shimmering displays is equally fascinating, rooted in complex interactions between the Earth and the Sun. The story of the auroras begins far away from the Earth, at the heart of our solar system, with the Sun itself. The Sun is a vast, burning ball of hydrogen and helium gas, constantly churning with intense energy. At its core, nuclear reactions occur, converting hydrogen into helium and releasing enormous amounts of energy in the process. This energy travels outward through the sun's layers, eventually reaching the surface, where it is emitted as light and heat. However, the sun also releases something else, a stream of charged particles known as the solar wind. The solar wind is a continuous flow of protons, electrons, and other particles that are ejected from the sun's outer atmosphere, known as the corona. While it may sound like a gentle breeze, the solar wind is anything but mild. It travels at incredible speeds, speeds, often reaching over a million miles per hour, and carries with it the energy and magnetism of the sun. This wind blows out into space, filling the solar system with a stream of charged particles that affect everything in their path, including the planets. Here on Earth, we are protected from the direct effects of the solar wind by our planet's magnetic field, which acts like a shield, deflecting most of the solar particles away from the surface. This magnetic field is generated deep within the Earth's core, where molten iron and nickel churn and create a powerful magnetic dynamo. The resulting field extends far into space, forming what is known as the magnetosphere, a protected bubble that surrounds our planet. However, the solar wind doesn't simply pass by the Earth without incident. When these charged particles from the sun collide with the Earth's magnetosphere, they interact in complex ways, causing ripples and disturbances in the magnetic field. At the same time, some of the solar wind particles are funneled toward the Earth's poles, where the magnetic field is weaker and the particles can penetrate deeper into the atmosphere. It is here, in the upper layers of the atmosphere, that the magic of the auroras happens. As the solar wind particles descend toward the poles, they encounter the Earth's atmosphere, which is composed of various gases, including oxygen and nitrogen. When the charged particles from the solar wind collide with these gas molecules, they transfer their energy to the atoms, exciting them and causing them to emit light. This process is similar to what what happens in a neon light, an electrical current passes through a gas, exciting the atoms and causing them to glow. In the case of the auroras, the solar wind acts as the electrical current, and the gases in the atmosphere are the glowing material. The colors of the auroras are determined by the type of gas that the solar wind particles collide with, as well as the altitude at which the collisions occur. Oxygen, for example, is responsible for the green and red colors that are often seen in the auroras. When solar particles strike oxygen molecules high in the atmosphere, they produce a greenish-yellow light, which is the most common color of the auroras. At lower altitudes, oxygen can also emit a red light, though this is less common and usually appears at the very top of the aurora display. Nitrogen, on the other hand, produces blue and purple colors when it is struck by solar particles. These colors are less common than the greens and reds of oxygen but can still be seen, especially in the lower portions of the aurora. The specific mix of colors that appear in an aurora display depends on a variety of factors, including the intensity of the solar wind, the composition of the atmosphere, and the altitude at which the collisions occur. The auroras are not static displays but constantly shifting and changing in response to the solar wind and the Earth's magnetic field. They appear as swirling curtains of light, sometimes forming arcs or bands that stretch across the sky. These shapes are created by the interaction between the solar particles and the Earth's magnetic field, 
which guides the particles along magnetic field lines toward the poles. As the particles move along these field lines, they create patterns in the sky, which can change rapidly as the solar wind fluctuates. One of the most fascinating aspects of the auroras is their connection to space weather. Just as the Earth experiences weather patterns in its atmosphere, space itself is subject to changes in the flow of energy and particles from the sun. These changes are driven by the sun's activity, which follows an 11-year cycle of increasing and decreasing solar activity. During periods of high solar activity, known as solar maximum, the sun produces more solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs, which release large bursts of solar wind and magnetic energy into space. These events can have a significant impact on the Earth's magnetosphere, leading to stronger and more frequent aurora displays. Solar flares and CMEs can also produce geomagnetic storms, which occur when a particularly strong burst of solar wind collides with the Earth's magnetic field. During a geomagnetic storm, the auroras can be seen much farther from the poles than usual, sometimes as far south as the United States or Europe. These storms can also cause disruptions to satellites, GPS systems, and power grids, as the energy from the solar wind interferes with electrical systems. However, for most people, geomagnetic storms are a chance to witness an even more spectacular display of the northern or southern lights. The auroras have been observed for thousands of years, and different cultures have developed their own explanations for these mysterious lights. In ancient times, people often saw the auroras as supernatural or divine phenomena, believing that they were messages from the gods or spirits. In Norse mythology, the northern lights were thought to be the reflections of the sh shields of the Valkyries, the warrior maidens who escorted fallen soldiers to the afterlife. In Inuit folklore, the lights were believed to be the spirits of the dead playing a game of football in the sky. In more recent times, scientists have come to understand the true cause of the auroras, thanks to advances in our understanding of the sun and the Earth's magnetic field. The first scientific explanation for the auroras was proposed in the 18th century by the Norwegian scientist Christian Birkeland, who suggested that the lights were caused by charged particles from the sun interacting with the Earth's magnetic field. While his theory was initially met with skepticism, it was later confirmed by space missions that detected the flow of solar wind particles into the Earth's atmosphere. Today, the study of the auroras is an important part of space science and atmospheric physics. Researchers use satellites and ground-based instruments to monitor the solar wind and the Earth's magnetosphere, studying how these interactions produce the auroras and how they affect the planet. This research is not only important for understanding the auroras themselves but also for predicting space weather events that can have an impact on technology and infrastructure here on Earth. One of the most exciting developments in recent years has been the discovery of auroras on other planets. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune all have magnetic fields and atmospheres that produce auroras similar to those on Earth. However, the auroras on these planets are much larger and more powerful than those on Earth, due to the stronger magnetic fields and more intense solar wind in their regions of the so solar system. For example, Jupiter's auroras are so large that they could wrap around the entire Earth several times, and they are powered not only by the solar wind but also by the planet's own volcanic moon, Io, which spews charged particles into space. The study of auroras on other planets has provided valuable insights into how magnetic fields and atmospheres interact in different environments, helping scientists understand the dynamics of planetary systems. It has also raised intriguing questions about whether auroras could exist on planets outside our solar system, potentially serving as a clue to the presence of magnetic fields and atmospheres on distant exoplanets. Despite our growing understanding of the auroras, there is still much that we don't know. Scientists are continuing to study the fine details of how the solar wind interacts with the Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere, hoping to unlock new secrets about this fascinating phenomenon. For example, researchers are investigating why the auroras sometimes appear in unexpected places or during periods of low solar activity, as well as how the particles that cause the auroras are accelerated to such high speeds. 
One area of active research is the role of magnetic reconnection in the auroras. Magnetic reconnection occurs when magnetic field lines from the Earth and the solar wind break and reconnect, releasing large amounts of energy in the process. This energy can accelerate particles and create powerful bursts of aurora activity, known as auroral substorms. By studying magnetic reconnection, scientists hope to better understand the dynamics of the magnetosphere and how it responds to the solar wind. The auroras are a reminder of the deep connection between the Earth and the Sun, as well as the dynamic forces that shape our planet's environment. They are a stunning example of how energy from space can interact with our atmosphere to create something both beautiful and scientifically significant. While the auroras may appear to be a peaceful and serene display of light, they are actually the result of powerful forces at work, from the churning plasma of the sun to the invisible currents of the Earth's magnetic field. For those lucky enough to witness the northern or southern lights, the experience is unforgettable. Standing under a sky filled with shimmering colors, it's hard not to feel a sense of wonder at the natural world and the forces that shape it. Whether you see the auroras as a scientific phenomenon or a magical display of nature's beauty, there is no denying their ability to inspire awe and curiosity. And as we continue to study the auroras and the space weather that produces them, we will undoubtedly uncover even more of the secrets behind these incredible lights.